me, my job is to connect with people. I was looking uh, at your website, and you have uh, a section on human rights mm. in America, mm -hmm. and you have a portrait of the Little Rock Nine. Mm. Uh, how do you keep a human connection with such a large group? My job is actually to create a connection with people first. Photography is not the most important part. It's the human element. So with the Little Rock Nine, that was a really difficult shoot. Um, we decided to fly in all the members of the Little Rock Nine back to their high school where they once made history many, many years ago. And I remember we got them all in line and you can see their Gothic high school in the distance. And there was a woman in the middle of the group and her name was Elizabeth Eckford and she had her head held up rather awkward like this and and I just thought it doesn't really get in line with everyone else so now you have to go back to the late 50s when they all went to this high school and Elizabeth was 16 years old I believe and she was going to her school one day and she got separated from all her friends and she gets attacked by an angry mob of white mothers and it is the most disgusting shameful part of American history you're ever gonna see so roll on many many years and she's standing in front of me and I shouted out to her excuse me would you mind lowering your head a little because it looks a little awkward and I'm trying to get everyone in balance and she changed and she said young man don't you ever ask me to lower my head I hold up my chin high with pride because of what we did and at that point they all looked at each other they all raised their heads together up to her level in pride and then they all held hands and I got a picture of that and she said you've got to understand that this photograph is not just a picture of elderly people standing in front of a school this picture is about our struggle to fight for justice and equality in American society Another, uh, a lot of pictures actually showed things relating or people relating to Martin Luther King. Mm. I was wondering, like this must be how you take a portrait of Martin Luther King without actually being able to take a portrait picture of Martin Luther King. You know, Martin Luther King was assassinated in 1968. So how do you make a portrait of him when he's not there? So I went to his church in Atlanta where he used to preach and his father used to preach there as well. And uh, there's a very famous neon sign outside the church. It's all lit up and it's exactly the same sign that they had when Martin Luther King was there. So I decided to invite uh, some of his closest friends to come to the church to be photographed all together. And by photographing all his friends and the church. Hope you see the order on June 14th. And first item on the, on the agenda is the approval of the May 10th meeting. So may I have a motion to approve the May 10th minutes? So moved. Any, Seconded. Any additions, subtractions, corrections? Yeah. Okay, seeing none, all in favor? Aye. 
I don't think I have to abstain even though if I wasn't there. As as you you say I, I like them anyway. You, as long as you read them and you are. Yeah. Uh, yes. Then that's when you would say yeah. Okay. All in favor? Yeah. Okay. I'll vote. You believe they're true. Unanimous. Right. Okay. Got it. Unanimous. Thank you. Okay. I'm just not voting because I'm not a voting member. I'm an invited guest. Um, so my report, uh, it's great to see so many residents at the, um, at the Memorial Day Parade. I didn't know we had that many people under three feet tall in this town, <laughs> blown away. Um, absolutely fantastic to see all the kids. Um, I thank my fellow Board of Selectmen members for marching and uh, lots of other um, town officials. I marched. Um, and, um, and of course, Tracy was there with us. So, um, and I want to thank the organizers for the parade and for the event after. Monuments and Ceremonies did a fantastic job. On uh, Saturday the 3rd, uh, this last Thursday, day, last Saturday, <clears throat> Public Works sponsored its Hazardous Waste Day. 113 Darien residents and 112 residents from neighboring communities. So we let the neighboring communities know when we do this, and they took the um, advantage of um, disposing of things that aren't allowed to be disposed of at the dump. This is something we do every year. We had the Emergency Operations Center in-person training at the Darien Police Department on May 23rd and May 24th. So it was um, 8 to 12 um, those two days. And I participated with several town employees, um, and that's where we um, go through a playbook for possible emergencies, which is um, appropriate right now because we're entering hurricane season. So, um, and speaking of public works, um, the director of public works at Gentile will be giving a presentation on June 19th at our um, board selectman meeting on um, on a flooding update. Um, as part of the public engagement part of the um, we, um, the West Cog noise abatement study for the train noise, um, they are now entering into um, um, interacting with the public. So they'll be sending 7,400 postcards out for people. There'll be a QR code on there. You can fill out the survey there, or you can um, go onto West Cog site and fill out the survey there. <clears throat> this is. Um, been in the works for a while and we do have a number of residents that are um, paying close attention to this so I'm grateful that this continues to move down the tracks I mean the road um, want to um, congratulate all of the well actually a lot of a lot of kid things this this time of year right a lot of children things so I mentioned all of the, the little tiny people at the um, at the parade and um, I was at the Post 53 family event where um, you know we saw the, the seniors um, um, move on and the, the new group move in and to see you know to see young people in our town volunteering like that you know offering their time up I think it's really terrific I think all of the um, students at the high school that participated in the internship program is fantastic um, like I said I was at the um, Middlesex graduation yesterday. Um, <clears throat> so, was, uh, Jim's son, for instance, who did a great job crossing the stage. Um, <laughs> not, it was just, it was, takes out his death. It just was seeing, made it all the way across yeah. Yeah. without tripping. That's yeah, good. there were no so, yeah. <laughs> Seeing all these, I mean, and, and you know what? And, and hearing one of these students in their speech say, you know, time goes so fast, I was like, wow, you're, you're like, you're pretty young to be thinking that conversation <laughs> does go really fast, but wow, you've already picked up on that. Um, and then to go to the graduation tonight, it's, um, I just, I'm um, excited for all of the youth of our community. Um, and uh, this evening, um, I will not be here because I'll be at the high school graduation, but it's also the annual flag day ceremony, which we have in the veteran circle right here at Town Hall, and everyone is um, welcome. There is a brief ceremony, ceremony organized by the Monuments and Ceremonies Commission and members of the Veterans of Foreign Wars post 6933. So um, another, um, in addition to the, um, to the brief ceremony, um, we take this opportunity to collect used flags from our residents. So anybody that would like to um, bring their flag and have it um, properly disposed of, please um, take this opportunity. When is that? I'm sorry, I have the flag. That's, that's tonight. 
Okay. But you know what? You can always you can bring your flag in. It would be good if you got it in today. I can get it today. Where, where, where am I bringing it? You can just bring it to, right to our office. Okay, great. Tom. What time tonight? Uh, tonight, Linda, what five time? O'clock? It's, it's at 5, yeah. 5 o'clock. We just put a new one, it rings in, replace the old one. Yeah. We, we actually have, we, coll we do collect them throughout the year. People do bring them in throughout the year. But this is, the, um, you know, an official Great. date for people. Thank so you. Um, <clears throat> we continue to um, interview people for the, um, the Great Island Advisory Committee. We have interviewed 35 people so far. Um, we have 45 applicants, so we'll be finishing that up. And I hope to be um, um, making the appointments at our um, July 3rd meeting. And um, June 21st, which is next week, is it next week? Wow. Okay. Start of the summer. So I want to wish everyone a happy summer. We will meet in July, but we will not meet in August. Okay. Um, so remember what that young lady said that I just mentioned. Time goes fast. Don't let the summer blow right by. Really. Take an opportunity. Have some fun. Okay. That's my report. Thank you. I'll follow you by echoing our excitement for all of our recent graduates. Fifth grade graduated last year, excuse me, last week. Um, eighth grade graduated yesterday and our seniors graduate tonight. So we wish congratulations to all of those cohorts as they moved on to their next step. step. Thank you for being at the eighth grade graduation and for being at the 12th grade tonight, Monica. Um, Secondly, I also want to say that at our last board meeting, we talked about um, renaming the Oval um, around the high school, Wave Strong Way. We were approached by Wave Strong. Uh, we reached out to several of you to see, uh, just to check in. Uh, there was general support from the leaders of the, of the relevant uh, government organizations. We are, um, wanted to go ahead and announce that that's the intention, so we took it up at the board meeting. Um, however, we still have to go through the process. So the board has signaled its support for that renaming, but with the understanding that Alan, uh, the superintendent, will now undertake uh, figuring out exactly what the steps would be. Will you get that done this year? That is the intention, okay. yes, to do it as soon as possible. Um, thirdly, um, just for the community, we did make a change to the school's get, uh, calendar a couple meetings ago. We, during the contractual discussions, we did add some PD days. So the original start date uh, when we passed the calendar late last year was uh, Monday the 28th. It's now Wednesday, August 30th. So anybody who's planning their vacations or other summer plans, uh, the new start date of school is Wednesday, August 20, 30th, 2023. I'm, I'm sorry, I'm not into the acronyms. What's PD day? Professional development. Thank you okay. for asking. Yes. Okay. So there I'm are, not. yeah, we moved a staff day to the beginning of the okay. year. Um, so my kids got to be back from vacation August 30th. Well, you could be in school on August 30th, technically. <laughs> exactly. into that one. <laughs> <laughs> but I missed the first day. Then. <laughs> was that part of the new contract agreement? Yes, it was. Um, I was switching to building Oxridge, as you guys all know, is in its final stages. Um, HHR has gone out to bid. All three projects are out to bid. We are expecting them to come back in over the next couple of weeks. We have our first pre-bid meetings with contractors for Hanley and Royal, which will be in stage one on Friday, um, or actually tomorrow. Um, and we'll, so that, that will be when the contractors come in, take a look at the project, and begin to make sure that they understand all the parameters before they actually get back to us. Um, I think it's important for this group to know that for Royal, we, we, did, we stopped, we did another round of cost estimations because we were looking at what we thought was uh, possibly being very close to the total dollars appropriated. Um, the reasons for that were um, some unforeseen conditions like uh, soil, unsuitable soil. When I say that, I think it's, again, important for the public to understand that means that the soil is unsuitable for the building we want to do. Not that there's anything for, uh, from a public health perspective that's of concern. Um, other drivers were some design, design refinements as we finished up design, scope adjustments as we took in uh, you know, better understanding of what exactly we wanted to do, for example, to upgrade our technology or to create the correct security infrastructure. And lastly, some things that came up as we went through the, the process with other boards, including ARB and uh, PNZ, for example, some of the final uh, drainage solutions. Um, 
You don't have to come back to P and Z, right? You we do not have to come back to P and Z. But when we look up against our original appropriation, we seem to be fine for Royal. Uh, we are, if the cost estimations are correct, we are tight for uh, probably up to the dollar amount uh, for a family and homes. So to that end, until the bids come in, we know nothing. This is just the committee letting you know that we'll be watching the bids closely. And if they do come in um, as close to the cost appropriation, excuse me, the cost estimation as they look like they could, then we'll be back to you guys late summer fall. Uh, really what we'll be doing probably is replenishing the contingency dollars. Um, When's groundbreaking been clear yet? Uh, groundbreaking is still scheduled for the middle of August, so people are asking. Uh, the, the general plan is to do the, you know, set up late summer, do the new construction over this school year, uh, and then the renovations the second school year. That's in general. Um, there will be some renovation that starts happening immediately. We're going to take some ceilings out so that our contractors can work at their hours um, uh, throughout, the, throughout the school year. To, you know, I just want to go back to vacation for groundbreaking, too. Okay, well then you need to be back by the middle of August. Okay. okay. Vacation. Yeah. Um, and uh, so, yes. Run this town around. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe come and go again. Um, well, yeah. that's cool. HHR is, is very excited. Uh, Board of Selection have also interviewed some candidates for us, so we're appreciating that. We had a couple of candidate move and some other adjustments, so we're looking forward to having a full slate again in the near future. Um, yeah. Any time for the build? I need mean, plan on voting on that on Monday. Wonderful. So, so there's a meeting on Thursday? Did you say? No, not for not an okay. HHR meeting. The um, facilities, our construction managers are going to meet with the contractors who are interested in bidding. Will come in okay. and meet and just you know take a look at the schools and things like that. Okay. Um, um, and that's all for me. I'll be quick. We have a meeting coming up on Tuesday. Our our meetings come slow back to one per month. So over the summer. Um, there are a few things, few transfers and so forth and closeouts on our uh, on our agenda, but nothing nothing material, I would say. Just continue to watch the budgets as we kind of get up near our fiscal year end just so we can close out the accounts and um, so we'll be watching all of the operating budgets just to see kind of where surpluses play out versus what we originally counted on. So when do you anticipate giving guidance for next year? Uh, Probably at the end of the summer or in end September. Okay. Yeah. Because I think my, you know, my understanding is, you know, that's when the budgets right. begin to take place. I know on this on the school side, I think it starts in September. So it's, um, I think we will give guidance well ahead of time. So if, if your respective boards choose to give your staff guidance, you could do so, that's you know, ahead of time. Absolutely. That's great. Thank you. Okay. That's it. Me? You said. Okay. Uh, RTM met uh, on uh, June 5th, and um, we updated <laughs> some regulations that were had some mathematical errors in them, so we got that straightened out. And uh, we, we accepted a gift of statues, $425,000 worth. We're not sure why they were gifted, except that I understand they're big and heavy, and no one really wanted to move them. No, no, that's not true, Seth. Oh, darn it. No. They are beautiful statutes. They have been a, a part of that property um, for many decades. And um, I was very happy to see that they were interested in making that donation and very grateful. Well, they were accepted unanimously, so. So the statutes when you go into um, Ziggler's Cove on the left-hand side that you can see mm -hmm. in the water? Yeah. Beautiful. Nice. Good job. So uh, we approved five leases uh, for different properties on Great Island. Uh, we have one that's we're sort of on a, on a hang fire, the Serenity Stables one. I'd love to know if there's a timing on that because we don't meet in the summer. We'll so. have to get back to you on that. Um, but we do have the ability, I understand from the finest people on our technology committee, the rules committee, that we can do a virtual meeting. So yes. we met people spread out all over the United States participating in that, but uh, yeah, that was uh, we shared. have the we capability of that. doing it. Yeah, Seth, that was shared, and we, pre we do appreciate that. Yeah. We do anticipate that happening. Not a, uh, just get it done, you know. Yeah. 
Um, the Rules Committee is working with the registrars of voters. We've got new people coming into town. We're looking at the balance, the voting balance in the RTM. We're not required to have districts be balanced uh, in, in, their, uh, in, in their membership, but uh, we try to do that. We are fortunate to have John B.C. now on the RTM, so we have a, a, a professional in the ranks who can help us with this. So we're trying to figure out where that's all going to come down, and it's, it's not straightforward, but we're going to see how that goes. And uh, the Rules Committee is also uh, looking on updating uh, the committee descriptions that's been on the boards for a while. Uh, we read the, what the description in Appendix B of what the committees do, and we decided that there's stuff in there that, we, that they don't do. <laughs> so we're going to have to modify Appendix B uh, appropriately. And uh, so that's uh, all that's going on. So the committee modification, that's been, that's been spoken about um, a number of times. Are you planning on getting that done for the November election? Well, one of the um, key players in that was involved in the town budget. So uh, he is now uh, free from that, as we like to remind him. And uh, he and, uh, and, uh, and uh, Jack Davis and Frank Kemp are working on that. So I expect that this will be done by the fall. Thanks, Seth. Steve? Okay, um, thank you. Um, one editorial note. Um, Tracy, are you going to talk about fair share, or you want? Will you talk about fair share? Or? You can talk about it if you want. I'll, I'll talk I'll first. I'll intervene and you can, if you. And you can correct me. Okay. You were there. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Um, it, there's there's been a couple things we're doing on the on the um, planning zoning commission. Um, some really fun. Some that take a lot of time, and some that take more time than others. Some that are fun and take time. True. <laughs> some maybe that may not be fun. Um, the real fun was that, that the other night, last night, we approved a six paddle tennis court over at Weed Beach. So your paddle tennis court can be constructed. That is a six court that's going to sort of kind of be connected to the other two. Um, it's in a flood zone. Um, it's on a public property. So they designed it to um, go in the flood zone. They got past the site plan review and the CAM um, review for that project. So hopefully this fall you have another paddle tennis court over at Weed Beach. Uh, we also approved, um, and it's kind of hard to explain, but we approved the expansion of the Darien Library. Um, <laughs> they're expanding it to the lower level. They they added like 2,000 square feet in the base in the in the lower level, uh, which I spent time on for um, for staff rooms and coffee rooms and whatnot. So that they asked for it, and it was the first time the new director <coughs> of the library um, came to the PNZ. So that went through. Um, what else did we do? Um, yep, all right, those are the two main things. Uh, let me switch for a second to um, what, I, what I always call the three big projects in town. Um, at Federal, which is the Darien Commons, Seymour's opened on Friday um, with the new restaurant on the corner um, to very much fanfare. I think it really opened on Thursday. But um, Friday night it was open. The entire lacrosse community parents were there Friday night on the boys' side. And then after the boys played, the entire lacrosse community girls' parents came to the Seymour's. Um, so it was kind of a packed crowd. Um, I think they're really going to be successful. in um, their outdoor dining, the way they set it up, is really cool. Where you can sit outside, like on a, on a window, which is a bar. And they serve you, and there's tables outside. It's really nice. Um, they also have Adirondack chairs. I forget what portion of that is public um, plaza, but there's a lot of public plaza there. Um, they also they're gonna. I think they're they're gonna come to P and Z again soon to review um, this overall site plan again. They may want to make some a couple of modifications. They've asked for another time on our agenda, so we'll see what they're gonna do there. Um, they did open up all their plaza space, which really connects from, um, um, is it yeah, no, Heights Road? Yeah, no, Narotan Avenue, all the way th over through. They built a dog park. That's when you come off from Narotan Avenue, you go down a set of stairs. There's a little dog park there. Where you, there's you know one of those um, things, those poop machine things that your dog can walk to, right? And then you walk down the path, and you can get all the way over to. Um, 
Edgerton through their, through their walkway, so it's nice. And then the other walkway that's open where you start at the train station and then you cross through Seymour's and all that, you go up a set of stairs, you can go up the stairs out to McGuan Field in the back. So there's two crossways that go like that. So kids walking to school can cut through. Um, at some point in time, I probably want to meet with you guys in the public works. There's a crosswalk that's um, from the train station that cross over to Edgerton that probably hasn't been painted in a few years. If we can paint that again, then you can have the people come off the train, go across the street, and be safe to the whole sign. There is a stop sign there. I'll be on it. Thank you. Appreciate that. Um, what else? I, I don't know, have the opening date for Gregory's Coffee. That's the next one that's in that little pod. Um, and I don't have the opening date for, um, for the chocolate chip store. Um, for maybe next week, it's either going to be open or I'll get you the opening date because I know you're excited. Don't worry about the opening date. Okay. You don't care about the coffee place? To test the point. Okay. Um, the Corbin District um, is going really well. I really think the Memorial Day Parade made the Corbin District shine. Um, the, the Bank of America building was opened in the middle of May, um, beginning of May, and the parade was at the end of May. It, it looks absolutely beautiful. Um, almost all the stores on the, I call it the, um, the east side of Corbin Drive are open, which if you're driving down the street, it's the left side. Um, we approved um, for them to continue the process. They're gonna need a special permit um, from one of the stores. They wanna put a dermatology store in the middle building. Um, which needs a special permit, and it's a, I guess it's a dermatologist that's coming out of Greenwich that's going to open up an office here. And I've, I've talked about this before, is what they're doing is they're moving tenants from the left side to the right side and back to the left side. Toy Box is going to move out of their space, move into this space, and then when, when phase two gets built, Toy Box is going to move back to the other side, and then when the other side comes in, um, that, that dermatology store will open. Um, so that's probably two years out. Um, Compass should be opening soon. They're, they're there. The Cabana and Sandal store, I think is that, 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 that guy's open soon. Barrett Bookstore is open. Barrett Bookstore is supposedly doing better in sales in their new location than they were across the street, just because parking's easy. Um, yeah, I heard that from a bunch of different people. Yeah. Um, and with Going forward on that, the, the demo start for the phase two buildings. I think each one has already done, gone through their um, statutory process where they have to put up their signs and say these buildings are gonna be demoed. That should start um, somewhere between June 26th and June 30th. So you're gonna start to see those buildings come down. If we remember on the side of the Bank of America building, the big one, it's got that sign that you are not alone on it. So that was just a temporary sign, so that's gonna come down. Um, so I think that's moving forward, um, and, and th th again, and I'm going to get this in the next one, what they do is it's really a, it's like a nine permit process. You have to get three permits to knock down all three buildings, um, which is first set, then they get to get three permits to build the foundations for the next, for all those buildings, and then once the foundations are in, then they go vertical and there's another set of permits. The reason why that's important is when I move on to the next one, which, um, we call it Palmer's, it's called Heights Crossing now, it's now controlled by the Vicaro family, a company called V20. Um, they have their two building foundation permits to go vertical. Um, they demoed that site and that's now, it's, about, it's a pile of gravel and grass and with the three trees in the middle. Um, they have their permits to build that. Um, the first thing they need to do is, is in the back, there's, there's a big piece of land where it goes from the back of the property to the houses that back up at Neurotin Avenue. Um, a lot of that land's gonna come out and they're building this huge retaining wall to hold back the land. So they've notified all the neighbors on, um, on West Avenue on that side that back up to the property that this construction's gonna begin on that. So you'll see people, they've already started doing the work and they've started doing the neighbors. So they're moving forward on that one. Um, those are the big three. Anybody have any questions with regards to that? Good. No, I would just add to the um, Corbin that in front of the bank, there are 12 trees that will be coming down. In front of the old bank? In front of the old bank. Yeah. yeah. Which is the same thing that happened on Corbin Drive, those right. trees came down. Right. Yeah. So they are, you know, I think Corbin is replacing for every tree there. It's a three to one replacement, but of course these are mature trees and um, they'll be coming down late July, late June, early July. So 
I'm sure we will, um, when they tag them, we'll have people calling. In, in that vein, and we can talk about this another time, if you go to the other side of the railroad tracks, well, there's a bunch of big trees that are in front of like Planet Pizza, they damage the sidewalk. And if you ever go from one side of the railroad tracks to the other side of the railroad, it goes from really bright and sunny to really dark and, and quiet. That's something that's going to be addressed in some time in the future. Because um, those trees are all, on that side, in my opinion, are way overgrown. Um, the last thing I'm going back to federal for a second is uh, I'm not federal. Um, Corbin, uh, we also in our last meeting approved six um, high capacity EV chargers for the back of Corbin. Um, the three new buildings that are that are already up and built. I think each one of those are either a hundred have an EV charger for every single apartment or the building has the capacity to put 100% EV charges in all the building. So those guys are really forward thinking. They put in high, high capacity EV chargers for every single apartment in the building. If it's not there, the power and the transformers are there. And then when they open up the new section, um, there's gonna be these public ones. Um, they're not gonna be the Tesla ones that you see at I-95, but I mean, you guys probably know more about this stuff than I do. Because um, I know you follow that kind of technology, but the, the chargers are the high capacity, which I think are now going to be. I think in 2025, they're pretty gonna, much going to be universal uh, between Fords and all those. Are those all ground level? Yes. Okay. Yeah. The the new six ones are all ground level, exposed to the um, exposed to the general public. Okay. So if you go there for any reason, you can charge your car, and across the street you can charge it and do your shopping and whatnot. Um, so all their chargers will be ground level, no? The six new ones. Okay. The six new ones. The other ones that go with the apartments, right. those are in the parking garages. Okay. Yeah. Um, there, there is Erstat Biddle, they have one EV charger in theirs, that's the smaller one. Um, and it's, it's, it doesn't have, I don't think it has the Tesla connector. Um, Most of them are universal now, so it's more they? so just what the actual voltage output is. but. That's the high, the supercharger. Like, what, they, what they commonly refer to as level three, which is yes, the I've heard that it puts out the kilowatts. Okay. So they're going to have that there, which which is really I think kind of cool. Um, the next thing that I will want that part can be restricted to only electric vehicles, or will it just be? I, I think the sign's going to say on it electric vehicle charging, but if there's no parking and those are the only six left, I think you can park your Jeep there. Yeah, just question. If it's not electric. <laughs> <laughs> now is it electric? But yeah, just as you think about sort of global parking, right, just given the sort of intensity of electric cars statewide, it's, it's a, a significant minority across the entire population, even here in town. So just think about, are we taking up parking spots that are going to be solely for electric? The answer is no. Okay. Yeah. We're not taking away parking spaces. Um, the, the one thing that... that I mean, I, 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 don't, I don't have an electric car, so I don't really know, but one thing that we did discuss was when you go, if you're on the highway and it says, where's my closest charger, and you check on your phone, it could say downtown Darien. So people are like, oh, we're going to come off the highway and charge your charge. That's a good thing. You want them to come off the highway, charge their car, and go to a restaurant or go buy, you know, a necklace, necklace at Tiffany's or something like that. Um, I think that's the whole reason behind Steve, the whole thing. we don't have a Tiffany's. We don't? No. Oh, Work on that. We have other troopers, but it, <laughs> yes. if you read upon it, like if it, where they do place them, whether it's by Starbucks or other kind of small stores where you can be in and out, it's, it, it does has increased the intensity of, of shopping in those areas. So See, that's what we're here for. Um, Even though we don't collect those tax revenues, so let's go directly to the state. So for what? Like, like sales tax. Sales tax. Yeah. But it keeps our businesses growing. Yes. Correct. Yep. <laughs> which go. keeps rents up, which keeps grand list up. There you go. So how long do these cars sit there to get recharged? No, no, no. And the level three is usually 45 minutes to an hour. Yeah. Uh, moving, moving on to the next big thing. Um, the, 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 and Tracy hopefully gets into this a little bit deeper. Session ended uh, last Wednesday, last Thursday? Wednesday, midnight. Wednesday midnight. Um, on Thursday until midnight, I was out with the planning and zoning uh, chairman from Greenwich, uh, Ridgefield, and uh, Westport um, to review what happened up in Hartford. The, the, the couple big takeaways, there were three bills up in Hartford, and I, uh, Tracy was there, and Tracy and I were in contact 
probably every day, five times a day for the last um, week of the session. I, I didn't really didn't think that was part of the job of the Planning and Zoning Commission, but it, it is now. Thanks for being a friend. You're welcome. <laughs> um, and, and kudos to Tracy. I think she did a great job representing her district. Um, and hopefully you can fill in some of, some of the things. The, the big takeaways that, that, that I heard, and I don't want to get into the logistics and timing and all that stuff. Um, on Friday night, the person that was putting forth the, what they call fair share, um, it's a woman named Erin Boggs from OP Season of her company? Open Community, Open Community Alliance. Alliance. About 4.30 sent out an email um, that said the, the fair share document is gonna be pulled. Um, and it's not going to go forth in the, in the session. And I think the the Speaker of the House is a gentleman named Rojas. Uh, he he's said, the majority leader. Yeah. He said they were, they were not going to put the thing forward. And it was 4.30 on a Friday, so I went out um, at 4.30 on a Friday and kind of sort of shut off my phone. Um, this is, yes, right. It was yes. two Fridays ago, right? Yes. For right. session. Yeah. Um, and I found out at, at one o'clock in the morning that the fair share bill um, got resurrected um, and was put in as an amendment to another bill. The reason why that's important to Darianne um, and, and Tracy can can explain it later. The fair share um, was put put forth for this company called Open Community Alliances, and I brought this up last week, and I don't know if I brought it or last month. According to the document that's from May of 2021, and this is a little bit of a moving target, um, and it changes every year, the fair share allocation for the town of Darien is 1,271 multifamily units they, that they want to build in Darien. Um, affordable. affordable. They've those. It is it affordable? Yeah, that's the affordable. So you have to gross it up by 30%? Yeah. Okay. So I think I calculated out, it would end up, like if you had two people per unit and you gross it up by, you know, to make it the 80-20, right. you'd end up with an extra 16,000 people in Darien. Right. 16,000, yeah, oh, 16,000 people, which people, is about... 8,000 units. 8,000 units. Right, because it's... As attached to the minutes from last week was a document I put forth from that we've been working on for years, um, and I, I don't have it at my fingertips again, it was, I think... 860, 864 multifamily units that Darian has built or approved in 23 years. So now what Fair Share wants us to do is build something like 3,000 units in five years, or approve 3,000 units in five years. Darian does not have land to build on. It doesn't. Um, it's 5% developed. It's no one known that for years. But what, what happened up in Hartford is, is directly affects Darian. The, I'm not going to get into semantics. I'd rather have Tracy fill because what happened at between I don't know 11 p.m. at night and two o'clock in the morning, fair share was put in, but it's a study of fair share. It's not fair share. I think is the best way to do it. Right. But you can explain it. Let me just go to the you next. You finish item. your what your journal. Then, then the other piece, um, and there are people that are that are that are, are part of the open lines community that live in the town of Darien that are lobbying the, the legislators that are putting forth this. So there's some, there's some people that live in the area and that are putting, they're pushing this project. Yeah. Um, are elected officials or just residents? No, no just residents. Um, and that, I, think they're, I think they call themselves lobbyists, but I'm not really sure. Um, the other item that's part of it was um, Live, Work, Ride, which is the thing that was desegregated Connecticut um, for years. That was, they wanted to build I think it started at 30 units per acre within a half a mile or a mile of, of a transportation station. For those with 60,000 or more. So, our, But ours would have been 20 units per acre in Darien for okay. below 60,000. I testified, I think, two years at the house that I only, I would, Darien would, wouldn't even enjoy 15 units an acre. Um, it's on file. It's a letter that we did. Mm -hmm. We submitted it. Um, so this is even greater than that. And We've been through this rodeo before, and I, I, from what I sense it's going to go. But my understanding is that the whole um, live, work, ride proposal did not make anything, and that didn't that didn't go forward at all. That got dropped. Um, so, with that said, that's just something that that we have to keep our eye on. Um, we have great staff in Darien that does watch it. Fred Donite watches it all the time, and Jeremy Ginsburg watches it. But I think Fred spends a lot more time on it. And again, you know, I'm in contact with 
with Tracy and tangentially Tom, Tom O'Day. We wrote another letter. Um, first, like when um, McNally, um, uh, Monica McNally, myself wrote a letter to our three senators um, in the middle of May and sent it to them and said, we do not support these three bills. Please um, you know, support us in not supporting them. Um, I never got a response back from them, and you never got a response. It went to Senator Duff, Senator uh, Billy Miller, and Senator um, CC. Is it Mar? Mar, not your Mar. Uh, uh, don't confuse the two. Please. Yes. Um, so that's what happens in Hartford. I spent two weeks on that um, last month, which is outside of, of PNZ um, or outside of our town. Then the last couple items. Um, that I want to talk about is um, we had we closed we closed a hearing on Seven Sedgwick, which is a project that's on the Sedgwick outside of um, Goodwives. That developer, and I think I brought it up before, they want to have 40, 45 or forty six units an acre on that site, um, which is outside Goodwives Shopping Center. Um, they asked for some things to change the zoning code to, to submit that. I don't know if you guys read the Stanford Advocate, but it was a front page article on the Stanford Advocate yesterday. Yeah. Um, and it might be a front page article in the Daring Times tomorrow. Um, last night, relative to Great Island, we had our first um, meeting on this special permit request for the, um, for the stables over at um, Great Island. Um, because I had to go to the airport, that hearing was left open. Um, so we'll continue that, I think, next week. Um, I think Kate um, Bush made a great presentation of what they want to do there. Um, so we'll see where that goes going forward. Um, was there anything else on my list? I think that's I think that's pretty I think that's pretty much it. The one thing I just want to you know when I pass it over to Tracy, um, the stuff that happens in Hartford really does affect our town. So watch your elected officials and Tracy's very engaging, <laughs> which is great. So thank you. Steve, a couple questions. The library did they give you an indication of when they're starting that? Um, did they give me an indication? No. I think there was, uh, we got, we got the, detail, the detailed floor plan. I don't, it's curious, I don't know if they have their funding or not. Maybe they do a fundraiser for it. They have funding. Do they have it? Okay. It's not, I mean, to me, what I think what we kind of sort of asked them, they want to have all this stuff done by when school starts, mm -hmm. which is now apparently August 30th. Okay. And Cedric, is it on for Tuesday? Did, did we had one round of deliberations on last, Two weeks ago or Tuesday, we had to pass on it last night because um, I don't think we had the right people there. Yes, we're going to do it again on Tuesday. Okay. So we're, we're going to put in a special meeting, which is a two, next Tuesday, which is what six days from now, and the two items in the agenda. I think there's only two items going to be the continuation of Great Island's public meeting um, or public hearing, and then the general meeting item, which is going to be deliberations for seven Sedgwick. Okay. Yes. Okay. Thanks. Thank you. All right, so uh, there's a lot here, but I will make it quick. And if anybody wants to um, talk to me in more depth about any of the bills that have come through, please contact me. Um, I will start where uh, Steve left off with the planning and, and development, the housing bills. And he is right, we, on Friday, even we in the House thought everything, we were, I, I will say one of the things that I have learned about what happens is, in Hartford is um, the House, we are doing a really nice job of working together. I think, you know, there's communication back and forward between parties and I've made a lot of friends on the other side and we do a good, uh, you know, yeah. good, good discussions is really good. Um, and we were, and just like Steve said, we had come to the conclusion in the House that fair share really was not fair share. It, it wasn't going to work. These numbers weren't workable. And that was going to get pulled. What happened is the Senate, <laughs> and so the Senate came down. I could see them over there talking to Rojas. And then the next thing we know is that we have a bill that is called, as a Senate bill, an act establishing a tax abatement for certain uh, conservation easements. And has nothing to do with housing or fair share or anything, but it was put in as amendment to that bill. And we got the bill at maybe like 10.45 or something. By the time you read through it, it came to call at, at, at midnight. 
and you know we, we tried to we were really close at, at blocking it we were maybe three votes off and um, uh, anyway it made it back to the Senate and um, they were filibustering it and then everything shut down and they called it to vote and I don't know what happened behind the scenes at the Senate but there was clearly um, a deal made behind closed doors and it was voted on. So as it stands now, it's, uh, the reason why the other bill couldn't go through for the transit, uh, the for the yeah, train stations, yeah, the communities, yeah. is because you had to have this bill in there first because this set up the office um, that the other bill would have relied on. So you had to have this bill come in first. So this is kind of the, the first step of that. So it is just a number at this point that the uh, fair share alloc uh, allotment will be set. And then it'll have to go back to the committee. Those numbers will have to be approved at the committee level. It'll then come back to the House and back to the Senate. So every representative and every senator will have to basically sign their name beside their number. Um, you know, because you're voting on it, right? So if you're voting yes, then that means that, yeah, I think uh, Darian can, you know, build 1,300 units and... 16,000 more people. Yes. How many, how, how big is your new school expansion going to be? <laughs> it accommodates what we already have. It would almost double our population. Yeah. So you're not building the schools to double? So... Not yet. The, the really good news well, I is... I guess I'll be back in the fall. Uh, so Tony Scott, who's the head of planning and development, um, I, I worked really closely with him, and I'm, I'm not on the committee, but just, you know, I, I know this is a big issue here. And we made a lot of friends across the aisle. There's a lot of people that have, have good common sense that really understand that this is not working. And, and moving forward this summer, we're, we're going to all get together uh, as a Fairfield County group to to have some real discussions on how this should move forward because you have one side of the state telling the other side of the state what should be done and if you look at the people who voted against it you'll see they're lower Fairfield County I mean not necessarily um, all of Stanford and Norwalk because they did get excluded basically they were saying oh you're they, th this this went along like oh well you're close to 16 percent and that'll be our cutoff so where you don't have to do it and that's where Stanford and Norwalk were but I um, there were even some um, there were some Stanford people that were kind of kicking themselves at the end that they, they think they should have voted against it too. So I think that the sentiment is out there that this is not the way we need to move forward. Um, uh, so fingers crossed and thank you very much to you. Uh, this group that he has together of um, uh, zoning boards is phenomenal. They're, they're behind the scenes, they're, they're bringing real experience and real discussions to their representatives and they're really rallying and, and making, making it known what the consequences are. And I think that when a representative hears from their planning and zoning um, committee and their planning and zoning committee says this doesn't work for our town, it's hard for them to vote for it. So Some of them did, yeah. but. <laughs> how, how did our representatives vote? Um, so I obviously voted against it. Tom O'Day voted against it, and your three senators voted for it. And there's an op-ed um, that um, CC Mar wrote. Uh, if anybody wants to read it, I think it's in the Westport um, newspaper. That she wrote an op-ed. And just just for clarification, for everybody knows, and I, I think you're on the executive board of Westcog. Yeah. It, part of the, the people that, that I interact with is the, the executive director, is that his name? That's his title? Francis Pickering, who's the executive director of Westcock. This gentleman is, is, is brilliant. He is. Um, he's really smart. Um, and he, he provides all the data and all the information, all the insight, and he's right down the middle of the road. Um, but he provides it to us, and, the, and the, the, the chairman that I deal with, and I don't mean to take away from your time, there's, there's in terms of population, there's Republicans, or there's a Republican, there's a Democrat, there's an Independent, um, and we all get together. The, the, two ch the chairman for um, Ridgefield is um, Democratic, and this is not supposed to be a Democratic-Republican issue, but he's, he's a Democrat, he's 100% against fair share. Same with Westport, and the Greenwich is, um, I don't know if you call it independent or unaffiliated, um, but it's, unaffiliated. it's, yeah, it's unaffiliated, it's, it's different. 
So Fair Share is the name of a lobbying group, or what? what Fair Share was the concept that was put into the bill. The lobbying group is Open Communities Alliance. Alliance. Yes. Uh, um, the Chris other Spencer. lobbying group for the um, for the transit-oriented communities is uh, Desegregate Connecticut. So Tracy. Mm -hmm. Do you see the TOD bill coming up next year, or will they need to finesse this part before they can address I think it's going to come up. I think it's going to come up. So I mean, my, the, the, the benefit of these bills is that, well, there's, there's a couple different issues. I mean, the, some of the bigger towns really like it because, right, it brings, it brings people into the town and that increases your tax revenue, right? So, so for Norwalk, I think that you know, some of this is, is really good, and Norwalk is taking initiative on this. Um, I, I, it is a, a bit of a boon to uh, developers because they can they can get around um, some of the regulations and zoning in towns. Uh, so I think that's you know when you see money given like that, I think you're going to see these come back over and over. <laughs> I, and I do think that there was there was a bill a part of the bill that was a workforce development. And I think that's that's a good idea. It, it brings yeah, yeah yeah. I think that's a great idea. Um, CBIA was for that, and you know it, it makes sense in communities that um, have companies moving in and they need housing, and it's a, it's a way for them to partnership with. Um, with builders and with the community to make that happen, I think that's a that's a good idea. So it wasn't this is not all bad, but um, so that was a ta that was a tax break from the from the municipality to the developer, right? The workforce housing. The work no, it was incorporating it was it was incorporating the company as well into right. Yes, right. Yes, yeah. so CBIA is Connecticut Business <coughs> Industry Association. Industry Association. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, the, the issue with some of these are that the, the financial cost of implementing this, of adding that many units here, if you look at sewer, school infrastructure, other types of things are like untenable. I mean, this is fire department, at EMT. Yeah, and, and well, even like when you look at the schooling, the, the, the new budget just included a new grant, which you know, this year the schools upped our grant by $13,000 is the amount of additional sort of um, is that a is that a percentage point at all is it like so right now the through our ECS grant which is our kind of primary general education grant we get about a hundred dollars per student and they've increased that by two dollars and seventy cents per student what's it cost to put a student through school Darian? about twenty three thousand yeah. twenty three thousand is what we calculate as our cost per student that right so that if you take the budget and divide by the number of kids right yeah it includes fixed costs yeah um, Whatever. Right. Just one, one just thing to note, and I apologize again, is um, Darien does not have a workforce housing zone today. Um, we don't really have that. Uh, we, it's not in our regs, and you don't get any special thing like that, like affordable housing, or, or um, which is, it, our regs have, to build, a for, to build any multifamily building over four or five units, you have to have 14% affordable. That's how we get them. Um, there is no such thing as workforce in our town. And a clarification, we're never really chasing moratorium points or, or housing equivalent points, which gets you to the next moratorium. And if I think you do do workforce housing, you get zero moratorium points for that. So it really there's, doesn't. There's 20, uh, in the one that was, I can't remember. What today, it was I don't know what you guys are going to do, what's going yeah, on. Yeah, what was Hartford. in that bill? I can't remember if it was 10% or 20% affordable. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's that, the so other. So it doesn't work toward, the workforce part doesn't work towards it, but there is a component of, um, the 830G in those housing too. Which is 30%. The other thing that's odd in one of these bills is, um, like I said, Dar Darien's affordable housing uh, requirement, if you build a large unit, has to be 14% affordable. Right. The state budget, or the state number, is 10%. So they're going backwards. Yeah. So and I think this state is, was 10% over t a 10 unit project. <laughs> We're 14% over a four unit project. So what happens in most of these communities, they build a, a housing project with nine units. And we have two of those in our town. So which what's are the reason for going backwards? Do they just believe the volume will bring the wrong I, price I, down? It's, I, I don't know. I don't, I'm not up there. Well, that's why I was against it. I said, you know, we're 14% we're over four. You guys are 10% over 10. Okay. I got quite a few other things I want to just. That's okay. No, no. I know. <laughs> it's just so important. And I, I think that everybody wants to hear about this. Um, 
together just a little synopsis here for another group I was meeting with yesterday, and probably you all don't care about that part. Atria. But it, it, yeah, it was for Atria. My wife was there. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Great. Yeah. Um, they're an active group. They're lovely. <laughs> they wanted to hear about um, some of the gun bills and some of the voting issues. So. Early voting did pass. Um, no excuse absentee ballot passed. Uh, this will not go into effect until next year. It is 14 days prior to general elections, seven days prior to primaries, and four days prior to special elections. Um, there was a, a fiscal note attached to this. So um, initially, for the state, it'll be um, close to $3 million over the next three years. And for the towns, nothing for fiscal year um, 24, but they are going to have to take over some of the um, some of the funding after that, and it will be um, it's it's going to be if they have it estimated 2.6, but that's not per town, 2.6 million, but that's across all the towns. But you know, you think you've got you're going to have to staff your uh, staff it for 14 days, so that will be a cost and. Um, it is one location that is set for early voting, unless you opt. If you want to opt in for two, you can, you can do that. And there's a special, um, special way to go about getting a second one and deciding where that's going to be. And let's see. I did mention that's not until 2024. So this will be so exciting to try this for a presidential. Um, it's going to be. It's the first time that's going to be a presidential election. Yes, 2024. What about the primaries in 24? Oh, I'm sorry. Yes, it should be, yeah, primaries. It's, it'll start January 2024, so you're correct. Um, education, you talked about, you know, I know it's not a huge jump for um, for Darian for any of the, the payments, but... Relative to the $275 million of income taxes and pass taxes that we send, it's very small. Very yeah. small. Um, uh, I had mentioned before that um, Dr. Adley had come up and spoke and spoke about the reading program and the implementation that Darian is still trying to get a, a waiver out of, and Darian won't hear about that until August or September. Um, that has been bumped out to a year before you have to implement it. Unfortunately, we were hoping that there would be some more concessions made. The only other concession was is that they would they're going to um, uh, implement um, uh, help for some of the schools. So that we're, we're going to have to see how that goes, but I'll be looking forward to your feedback. Um, and I meant to tell you before this meeting, I'm sorry to drop this on you, the, there is an increase of age of kindergartners. Yeah. You have to be five years to start kindergarten. There's a waiver that can be had. Um, but that is going to be, by the start of the school year, the kids will have to be five. Again, sorry, I needed to tell you before. Five, as in that's believed. Five years of age before you start kindergarten. As of the day you're starting school or the January 1st? Day you're starting the school. Right now it's January. It, it, is, it is January that you would turn five now. So, so is that really, so when does that start different days, a couple days apart? There are different levels at each at each school. Oh, I, I, that's a good point. And uh, yeah. I think it's August yeah. thirty-first. So we'll, you know, you and I can dig. We can we can go through the education bill uh, a little more in depth. Um, I is in line with what most of our community does. I don't have concerns about it for Darian. I just the belief was always that starting kindergarten as soon as a kid needs it was best for children. And there is a waiver, so that can be had. Um, there was an 883-page budget that was put on our desk about 20, uh, 12 hours before we had to vote for it. Um, the good news is, is a lot of input from the budget was bipartisan, and there is, um, you know, there is uh, the tax decrease for um, for middle income wage earners, and then there is uh, for pensions. There was a there was a cliff for those making seventy five thousand and a hundred thousand, and that cliff has been eased out to an incremental uh, change from a hundred to one hundred and fifty thousand for joint, and then seventy five to a hundred for single filers. 
um, and I'm happy to go through that with anybody that has questions, but just to let everybody know that that was an issue before that um, uh, for some of our seniors with their pensions. I think they also, did they cap the uh, auto property tax? Um, mill rate, I think they lowered the maximum mill rate on automobiles, which is generally three times what our mill rate is, but it's it uh, doesn't really affect area. Okay, well. So they capped it at like 30 and our mill rate is 16. We also have a, yes. a diesel, a diesel, um, there's a tax on the, uh, cap on the diesel price for the next little bit and aviation fuel too. One of the great things I think about this budget is it employed one of the, um, I, I was really impressed with um, uh, Tammy Nuccio who is head of our appropriations who really dug into a lot of the the departments and, and found out who is on their staff, when they're going to hire them, what's their previous hiring rate, how you know, are, are when are they planning to be full staffed, and then she cut their budget. If they weren't planning on being full staffed until October, then they shouldn't get that staff wage in their department in June or July. And she went through each department and cut out about two hundred million dollars out of the budget just by doing that. And I think that was just a very impressive thing to do. Time. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so and that was used in this budget. So okay. that was very impressive. Amazing that they, she even got that through that. Yes. Uh, right. Along those lines, the new office that they set up for this fair share stuff, it's called the Office of Something? That was yes. Right. How much does that cost the state? Um, I, I'll go back and look at the fiscal note. That was already, and that wasn't, it's not really a new office. Okay. It was, um, a at business. the end of every bill, it says that this office was already in place with, I think Jody Rells had, had put that in place before. Jody Rells so, was the governor. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's other like the Office of Responsible Growth or something like that? Oh, yeah, that sounds uh, right. It, I'll, I'll look into the. Okay. But I'll Tracy, when they say the office was in place, it doesn't mean that the it's fully staffed, right? No, I don't think you're right. So, no, it's so not. So that doesn't mean anything. Yeah. They're just not creating a new department. They're just right. Right. That's well, yeah, funny. It's it, it's it's it. I mean, she just cut out a hundred. It's if there's ten people work there and everyone's got an average salary of eighty grand. That's. Yeah, a lot of money. <laughs> well, a lot of departments are still understaffed, and we saw that here just over the last few years, right? Where. Yeah. I'd really have the eight million dollars to build yeah. the, the housing around town than a bunch of people in Hartford. That's just well, me. we're getting thirteen thousand back. So. For your excess costs grant, is that the one that you said went up? This is educational yeah. cost sharing. Educational cost sharing. sharing. Excess cost is for children with needs. No, that's what I'm saying. The right. excess that cost that was fully funded. So that was fully funded. Yes. Yes. Well, when you say yeah, yeah. It, it, it's actually. It's not fully funded, right? We just get a percentage of it. So the ECR. The fully funded, the the percentage. Fully funded. You're right. They're not they're not going to reimburse no. us dollar for dollar. No, no. They don't you fully fund yes, all correct. the submissions. Right. So therefore, right. we get. But, a but so we're your the formula, they're fully funding your formula now. Is what. So if it costs you a hundred bucks, and you put in for seventy five. You get 75. I think there's. Uh, it's more complicated than that. Yeah. But yes. Right. There's three different tiers of reimbursement. Yeah. We're in the lowest the tier. Yeah. Those three different tiers are then ratcheted down <laughs> by the percent that they decide to fund of the total submissions. Okay. And that was about 20 odd percent below. Rich has a great spreadsheet on the, um, yeah. on the school's website which details it all. But they do not fully fund. Uh, got it. Right. Uh, I think what's, what ends up being nice for us is we experience a lot of volatility in our budget planning because we don't know if it's going to be 70% or 75% or 80% or 68 and so that's created a lot of volatility. So understanding that there is a set percentage and that that percentage is funded is helpful. But yes, it is absolutely yeah. not fully funded. But it's not a set percentage. It's a percentage of a percentage that we don't know. That you so file. we know the X percent, we don't know the Y percent. And what we True. ultimately get are the, the two and I think that's, you know, they, they moved it from 140 to 150 ish. But, but at it's least, still yeah. woefully below the total amount of submissions. At least we can plan in house. Yes, but true. Got it. It's um, a nice formula. Yes. All of its formulas playing around with money. Yeah. Um, plenty of other bills that went through too on drug addiction, on uh, protection for children from online predators. Um, 
uh, strengthening some domestic violence bills, looking at um, intellectually disabled community and some health care costs, and many, many more. But Congratulations on your bill that you were. Oh, thanks. Yeah. So. What are you um, advocating? Well, there there was a whole pharmacy bill that went through, and part of it was, um, and this wasn't necessarily this wasn't my bill, but I really supported it, having pharmacists um, prescribe um, uh, oral contraceptives. There was also another bill, and the one that I did um, put in was for um, having uh, Plan B and vending machines, it, it, it ends up being all of over-the-counter medications. So, you know, you go to an airport and you can get Advil or Pepto-Bismol or something like that. You can't in Connecticut. I don't know if you've noticed that before, but we're the only state left that doesn't allow for any sort of over-the-counter medication in a vending machine. So and that, that came out of your committee, right? Yes. Yeah. Congratulations. Yeah. So Thanks. the Plan B will be in all those vending machines now. Uh, plan B can be in those vending machines because Plan B is already. This is not a new. Uh, this is not anything new. But Plan B is already over the counter. You can get it wherever you get your Pepto Bismol. So that is that is already done. Yes. And that's it. Could I ask a quick question on the fair share, just briefly? Sure. What towns are pushing this? Uh, oh, this is a good answer. <laughs> I'm just trying to I don't figure know. out. Uh, I, I sit on the Bridgeport Regional Business Council. Mm -hmm. I'm in Trumbull, Stratford, Fairfield, and uh, and Bridgeport itself, Chambers, and I haven't heard of, you could hear a pin drop on this. Yeah. So it, well, it does affect Bridgeport, and um, yeah. And then it really affects Fairfield, so they, none yeah. of their representatives are for it. Uh, the only one that was for it was there was one that um, Kristen McCarthy Bay uh, Fairfield. splits Fairfield and Bridgeport, and um, since it didn't affect Bridgeport, I think she felt comfortable that she could vote for it because it's it, it, it's, it's the majority leader's bill. Yeah, well, that's true. So, yeah. There aren't many Republicans on the BRBC. <laughs> I mean, I, it's lights at the high school. It's not a Republican Democratic issue. Yeah. And education is not a Democratic Republican issue. Yeah. You know, either is the fire department, either is the, the police department, or the, the post 53. So, I don't no. know, that's got nothing to do with it. Thanks. Thanks. Tracy, yeah. thank you so much for all your work this year. Yeah. Yeah. I know you Thanks. really you jumped into the into the fray, and I, you really did a great job for Thanks. our town. Thanks. I really appreciate it. Good job. What six months? January fourth. Five months. Wow. <laughs> and for taking the time every month to come here and talk with us. So yeah. yeah. I did miss them. Not everyone else. Yeah. Goes, so. <laughs> I bet you're looking forward to the short session next year. <laughs> it is a short session next year, yes. No budget. So, yes. Should be a little. Yeah. Okay. Uh, thank you, everyone. Does anyone have anything else? No? Okay. Motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Steve? Jim? Second. All in favor? Okay. Unanimous. Thank you. Um, can I have that? You can write it down. I can add that back. <laughs>
I don't know, Michelle, can we see Zoom here or in front of me? They seem yes, to be yeah. out. You only see it when she lets them in, you know, as far as when they go speak. Okay. okay. Otherwise, the lab is perfect. Good. Oh. All right. Good. Thank you. So good evening, everyone. Thanks for joining us in person and on Zoom. We have a full agenda. Hard to believe graduation is upon us. Congratulations to all upcoming graduates, those moving up from elementary school, those moving up from Middlesex Middle School, and those graduating from Darien High School. Looks like the weather might be with us. Congratulations to all eight award winners who are here this evening at the Superintendent Citizens Award. It was a great ceremony celebrating our students and all that they do day in and day out in our schools and in our communities. Um, we recognize those students and it was just an incredible celebration of their success at their various stages of being in the Darien school system. So congratulate to, congratulations again to all eight winners. A big thank you to all those teachers and staff that are retiring this year. Thank you for your time and dedication to our students and the district. A healthy and happy and best wishes in your retirement or your next journey, wherever that may take you. Thank you for all the staff across the district for the hard work and focus this year to make it another successful year for all our students. Thank you to our parents for all the hard work behind the scenes and for your continued engagement with the board and the district. We work as a community and to continue to be that high performing district and one that is one of the best districts in the state and the nation, we need your feedback and we are listening as a board and as a district. We keep the focus on our children their safety, security, and education each day. This is a guiding principle for the work we do as a dedicated volunteer board. While we may always have challenges and differences, we must realize that the world continues to change each day at a fast pace. And while we may not always agree, we must continue to support the needs of all students across the district. Life will continue to make us uncomfortable with change, but we must work through that change as a community to support each other and our students. We continue to be recognized as a high performing district in the state and the nation. Teachers and staff from across the state and the metro area continue to look for opportunities to be part of the district. That speaks to the focus and investments we have made in education in our community. Thank you also to all those that participated in the survey. While headlines sell newspapers, your continued engagement and feedback as parents is what is important. Negative headlines, social media posts, websites, email campaigns, and posted information out of context all feed misinformation and add stress and anxiety across the district and to our students. As a leading district, we are much better than that, and we must continue to focus on the needs of our students. Thank you for staying connected through our board meetings and through direct email to the board and administration. We appreciate all the participation over the last school year from our parents, and we will continue to listen and learn. Our students in school and graduating are faced with a fast paced and changing world each day. Thank you also to all those in the district supporting our great summer programs and to all those parents who will continue to be part of the drop off lines all summer long. I hope you take some time this summer to spend with family and friends. And as my daughters would tell me, dad, be in the moment, put the phone down, iPad down and close the computer create a memory and be in the moment with your family. So thank you and have a great summer. We'll move on to Michelle, public comment. If anyone in person would like to participate, please wait for the chair to recognize you. We will do people in person first, please. Thank you, Mr. Dunn. Good evening, everyone. John Dunn, 175 Raymond. I've been a member of the DEI team since its inception, and I just wanted to share some personal thoughts with you tonight. I've enjoyed getting to know so many of the wonderful members who were involved throughout this year and last. We are lucky to have some absolutely fantastic students, teachers, parents, and principals in the district. However, as we discuss the findings, it's important to mention consultant Mr. Ken Shelton, who co-facilitated multiple meetings in the spring of 2022. Mr. Shelton turned out to be a divisive figure within the community, blocking many parents, including DEI team members on professional social media accounts. Approximately 1,000 parents and community members voiced their opposition to him in a petition. And despite this feedback, the administration was adamant that Mr. Shelton was the only consultant to do this work. We all know how that worked. As the board to justice its findings tonight, I would encourage them to observe the lack of quantifiable recommendations in it. 
While qualitative advice can be additive, we need to understand how we could evaluate these recommendations on a defined frequency after they are potentially implemented. Specifics for that are missing. Additionally, I had hoped the report would have spent more time on what is working in our schools rather than just keep seeking to identify problems. When no school system is perfect, our teachers and students should be commended for what they're doing right. We should be learning from our best practices within town. As a tokenic dad, the Passport Around the World event is a perfect example of highlighting the abundant cultural diversity in our schools and would be easy to replicate across all elementary schools. Yet that went unmentioned. Finally, I'd ask the board to consider if the 14 meetings over more than 40 hours were the best use of our teachers, students, administrators, and parents' time and the district's resources for this final report, especially in light of our district's declining test scores. It's disappointing that Dr. Tranberg departs, his legacy will be one that prioritizes equity over excellence. In my view, it's very unfortunate that Dr. Tranberg leaves his role with a district in worse shape than he found it. We are in a challenging position, one rife with dissension, friction, and in dire need of a true administrative leadership to help restore unity and our academic excellence. Darian deserves better. Thank you. Thanks for speaking, Mr. Dunn. Anyone else in person? Mm -hmm. Hi, Diane Urban, 10 Crane Road. Um, as the CDSP DEI chair, part of my role is to speak up for the right of all students to a safe and inclusive learning environment. Related to tonight's equity team presentation, I am sharing a small sample of powerful comments from students to remind us that they have been asking and waiting for change. In June 2020, a change.org petition with over 2,000 signatures asked Darien schools to provide resources and training from groups and perspectives that are underrepresented in Darien. A group of current and former DPS students wrote to the BOE calling for an inclusive curriculum, annual DEI training for all staff and teachers, including coaches, age-appropriate resources to further education outside the classroom, and a sustainable method to hold all accountable. There were dozens of written testimonies, many sharing sentiments like, quote, DHS, DH, DHS alumni are so prepared for the collegiate experience in regards to academic rigor, yet so ill-prepared for social and cultural diversity, end quote. Other students shared how it is difficult to be different in Darien, including lack of representation in the student body, the staff, the administrators, and the town. They note lack of knowledge, insensitivities, bullying, microaggressions, and racist slurs. On October 12th, 2021, following a threatening, misogynistic, and anti-LGBTQ plus vandalism event at DHS, community members stood before the board asking for change. Among many disturbing incidents, one student talked about slurs and a can that was hurled at her face. She said, quote, previously I did not go to anyone to report these issues because I thought it was hopeless and that nothing would change, but now I am asking you to please hear us out and give us hope back. End quote. A Black and Native American bisexual alumna shared that she had been victim to countless racist, sexist, and homophobic slurs and actions. She stated, quote, now it is time for all of us to step up as a community and change the way the town interacts with anything it deems as different, end quote. On June 14, 2022, several students spoke up at the BOE about mental health and a need for culture change. One student asked for social change in Darien to normalize mental health needs and said, quote, the only way to spark this change is by implementing curriculum directly into the schools, end quote. In addition to these high school students, elementary students have shared with the board how they have faced racial insults from peers, with a first grader asking to, quote, help kids learn that it's wrong to make kids feel bad just because of their race, end quote. There are more, but I'll end with this student quote from October 2021. Quote, this is human rights. This is feeling safe at school when I'm trying to learn. At one of the best schools in the country, students shouldn't feel harassed and threatened because they're just trying to learn. She goes on. You're almost that time. I hope that you can hear the young voices tonight and show us that you care and show us the change that we are looking for. I hope you listen to the presentation tonight with their comments in mind. Thank you for speaking this evening. Thank you. Anyone, Anyone else, else in, in person? Sorry. Thank you, Michelle. Anyone on Zoom? If anyone on Zoom would like to participate, please use the raise hand icon. Carolina Magui, you are recognized and unmuted. Hi, everyone. Can you hear me? Yes, go ahead. Thank you. 
Hi, I just wanted to take two seconds to say thank you so much to uh, Chris Tramberg for everything he's done for the school. I'm so sorry that he's leaving us and very, very sorry and apologetic about what was said about him in the survey. But Chris, I wish you the best. Thank you so much for your participation and your uh, work at the Darien High School and the, uh, sorry, at the DPS. And I wish you the best. Thank you, Carolina, for speaking. Armel Jacobs, you are unmuted and recognized. Armel, can you hear us? Yeah. Can you, hear can us? you guys hear Go me? Ahead. Can you see Thanks, me? Armel. Go ahead. Um, thank you, Chris. Um, I just, <laughs> I want to thank you. I want to thank you for um, the way that you tried. <laughs> um, I, I see it. I see so clearly how hard you tried here. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm really sorry that we couldn't get it together as a community to help. And I'm sorry that this board did not rally behind you in the way that I think all of you should have. I think it's not right that you started a committee, you tried to answer, this man tried to answer the call of the students. We let people come in and bully. We let people bully this board. I'm talking to the board. You let people bully your hires, your consultants, your students. I think you need to be stronger when you see people coming into your house with pitchforks. You say, not in my house. You can't come in here with that dagger. You need to protect your people. When you don't, we lose them. And when we lose them, we lose our integrity and we lose our ability to show this community that we're moving forward, not backward. You're letting all these people come in here, grab the headlines and tell everyone Darien's still a backward place. We're not, we're not, we're changing. I know that certain people don't like that we're changing, but tough noogies, we're changing. We need the board to step up I know that you can do it. I'm so sorry, Chris. I'm sorry to see you go. We're going to try. We're going to keep trying. And I want to leave just the community with one quote here. This is about pride because it's Pride Month. Pride is important because somewhere out there, there's a confused teenager who still thinks maybe being dead is better than being gay. I want people to take that to heart. When you see the yucky stuff in our headlines, when you see what people are speaking out against, I want you to understand knowing what we've been through as a community. You need to protect these kids from these people who are attacking pride, who are attacking the DEI measures that those of us are trying to push forward. It's on you to protect them. And thank you. Thanks for speaking, Armel. Anyone else on Zoom, Michelle? There are no more raised hands at this time. All right, thank you all for participating in oh, the comment. a hand popped up. Sure, go ahead. Krista Carnes, you are unmuted and recognized. <clears throat> Sorry, hi, I'm in my car. Go ahead, um, go ahead Krista. Thanks. thanks, Krista Carnes, 45th Avenue. Um, I just wanted to say that um, I appreciate what everybody just said. And as a member of the DEI district team, I want you to know that a few voices that had predetermined what they wanted to take out of it and convey and shut this down from the beginning is not the full representation of the people who participated and that the overwhelming majority of parents, teachers, administrators that participated in the committee really do want to do go forward. So if we didn't make the strides that we made that we might have wanted to make, it does not it does not negate the work and the call that we have been asked to do. And we have to keep moving forward bit by bit so that we can make a difference for the kids that are coming next. So just keep that in mind, please. Thanks for speaking. Yep. Anyone else on Zoom, Michelle? Teresa Vo, you are unmuted and recognized. Hi, Teresa Vo, 22 Circle Road. Um, I just want to make one comment. Um, I read the results of the communication survey, and while I definitely agree with some of it, namely Aspen, <laughs> um, 
I saw some comments on there that I found really disturbing in relation to um, Chris Tramberg. And I've lived in this town 21 years. I know the words there do not speak for the majority of people from Darianne. But I will say what made me sad is that people thought it was okay to actually put those words down in black and white and submit them. Um, I just want people to know that's not the Darianne I know. Um, and Chris, I wish you really, I wish you, I wish you well. Good luck. Thanks. Thanks, Teresa, for speaking. Anyone else on Zoom, Michelle? There are no more raised hands at this time. Hello, okay. can you can no you hear me? Um, Hello. We can hear you. Your name? Hi, I'm sorry. Karen this Cummins? Yes, for some reason, I cannot find my hand raiser. I've used it before, but it's disappeared from Go my Go ahead, screen. Karen. You're Hi. Here. Go ahead, please. Thank you. Uh, Karen Cummins, 19 Point of Woods Road South. Um, I was on the DEI committee. Um, I, too, want to thank... Uh, Chris Tramberg for um, his Herculean uh, effort and leadership. Um, it is no small task. Um, it's very complicated, and I think he did an amazing job. I also just want to voice how important I think it is uh, that we have um, a diversity, equity, and inclusion program. Um, I think uh, it's critical that we continue the program uh, in the future years. We only scratch the surface. Um, it's not easy to do and to do right. Um, I would certainly advocate for out an outside uh, expert to come in uh, to help guide these conversations. Um, and I, I really do appreciate all of the parents and the students and the administrators and teachers who participated um, and their devotion to it. But I, I just want to uh, express my uh, deep, deep desire for this to continue and for the board to support a DEI program going forward. Thank you very much. Thanks for speaking, Karen. Anyone else on Zoom, Michelle? I'm going to give it a second. <laughs> there are no more raised hands at this time. Thank you, Michelle. Thank you for all those that spoke. We'll move on to the superintendent's report. Uh, good evening, everyone. Thank you for coming out this evening or in person and, and online. Uh, just, and I'll just reiterate a couple of things that uh, Mr. Chairman uh, remarked on, uh, only because we are live and it's also being recorded here. Uh, I'll just name... Uh, the recipients this evening, real quickly, just one more time of the Superintendent's Awards, just for the record. Uh, in the Henley School, uh, Summer Erickson. In the Home School, Emma House. In the Arch Ridge School, Emma Wang. In the Royal School, Julie Graziasa. Uh, in the Tokenique School, Jack Stricker. In Middlesex, Jack Nolan. And at the High School, Sophie Shu and Shafa Salman. Uh, so we congratulate uh, all of those uh, recipients who you see uh, before you this evening. Mr. Chairman also recognized the retirees and may do so uh, be a little bit repetitive also. You can see uh, the names real quickly here will be coming up uh, of all of our uh, retirees uh, this particular year. Uh, this year we, we pause uh, to celebrate the significant accomplishments of faculty and staff members you see before you and to recognize and thank the 17 retirees for their significant contributions to our children and to our special community. Uh, collectively over the years, our special group of retirees have served and nurtured generations of students, served in countless committees, participated in a variety of clubs, activities, lived through building projects, accreditation uh, visits, worked with many administrators and just as many educational reform initiatives and educational acronyms, some of which have come around again. And who would have known in their final years gave everything in helping the district navigate a global pandemic? And finally, the smoke. In his book, Learning by Heart, Roland Barth suggests that most of us become educators because we want to use our hearts and as well as our minds in order to promote young people's learning. Because we believe deeply that learning is one of the most noblest and most profound endeavors of the human experience. And because we're firmly committed to the value of learning in a democratic community. Our honorees are representative of these beliefs. They say that retiring is never easy decision to make. Now, well, maybe the words of a 13 year old from New York might provide some words of comfort and appreciation to our retirees when they look back on their times in our schools. People tell us not to look back, she said, but sometimes we have to. This is so we can see how beautiful the canvas of our life has become. Remember all the little splashes and smears of paint, all the little mistakes we made, they really won't matter in the end. Not when you see the whole big, beautiful picture. A special thank you to all our retirees for the color, 
texture and form that you have brought to the Darien Public Schools. And if I may say on a personal note as you leave, may the road always rise to meet you. May the wind be always at your back. May the sun shine warmly upon your face and the rains fall softly upon your field. Until we meet again, may God hold you in the palm of his hands. Farewell, colleagues, you will be fondly remembered. Please join me in a warm round of applause and appreciation of our retirees' dedication to Darien Public Schools, and most importantly, for the care and love for our students. The things come full circle. If you had seen the, 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 I'll call them the kids today. John, no disrespect, the kids, um, our senior class, members of our senior class, going down into kindergarten and visiting the schools. Thank you to the members of the high school for organizing that event and the high school administration and for all the students uh, as they uh, processed uh, through the schools. There may be a couple of pictures here scrolling for you in a moment or two. Uh, we have the Royal Homes and Oxridge School. Uh, they're moving up is tomorrow Fitch Academy is tomorrow morning at 9 a.m. at the Wheat Beach. We have the middle school uh, tomorrow evening. And also we look forward our, uh, to the high school weather permitting across our fingers for uh, good weather uh, on June 14th at five o'clock. It was just wonderful to see. The, the teachers got us such a kick out of it. The, uh, our students.